Hi, Peter Salemi, and welcome to part two of this video series, talking about the four beasts of Daniel the seventh chapter. Now, last time we studied uh, what the lion was, the first beast of Daniel the seventh chapter, and I'll put the link in the description below if you didn't uh, watch that video. I'll put the link in the description below and you can watch. And we went through some of the things about prophecy, how we are to interpret and study prophecy of the prophecy of scriptures of no private interpretation, Second Peter, the first chapter, verse 20, of putting our ideas into the Bible is condemned in the Bible itself, that we are to let the Bible interpret itself, let the Bible speak to us. And of course, understanding doctrine, a little here and a little there. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. We put it all together and we get the complete story. We also found when we do that, when we apply those principles, that a beast is a symbol of a king and his kingdom. And of course, we read that in Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 17 and 23. We understand that these are Gentile kingdoms because they are unclean beasts that are represented to us in prophecy. We also see that it's a succession of kingdoms. In Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 23, it says that it is the fourth kingdom that shall be on the earth. That means that there will be a third kingdom and a second kingdom. And of course, the first kingdom, which is the lion. So it's a succession of kingdoms. We also see that in Daniel, the second chapter, we see the image in that Nebuchadnezzar saw in the plain, and we see again, a succession of kingdoms. And it started with the head of gold, which is Babylon. So we also see that Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 are, it's the same prophecy, but they are represented, but they are different representations. Here we see an image in Daniel 2, and here we see beasts, but it represents the same kingdoms. We also find in, we also find in these prophecy, there, prophecies, there is, a, there is a characteristic principle involved where uh, these nations are symbolized as animals, and these are symbols of a nation that represent how a kingdom behaves, how it does something, and its style in battle. So we see a characteristic uh, principle here involved. Now, in the first video, we found that the lion symbolized the Babylonian Empire, and that the Babylonian Empire acted like a lion. Now we're going to go into the second beast, and we're going to show a clip of what Daniel saw, the vision that he saw in the sea. There's a great sea, and he saw this great vision. Take a look at this clip. And suddenly, another beast, a second, like a bear. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. All right, here we see Daniel's vision of a bear. And this bear was to take over the dominance of the earth after the lion, which is, of course, the Babylonian Empire. And as it plainly says here in Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse five, it says, I behold another beast, a second. Remember, this is a succession of empires. After the, the end of the Babylonian Empire, another kingdom would come and take over the dominance of the earth, a second. And of course, when we look at Daniel, the second chapter, again, Daniel, the second chapter, it says here in verse 39, it says, and after thee, talking to Nebuchadnezzar, he was the head of gold. It says, after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to you. So after the Babylonian Empire would come another empire inferior to the Babylonian Empire, and it would take over the dominance of the earth. Now, what uh, empire took over after the Babylonian Empire? Well, when we look at Daniel, the fifth chapter, in Daniel 5, here we see that Belshazzar was having his idolatrous feast. They were even drinking out of the vessels that they took from the temple of God in Jerusalem. So they were mocking God, and at that time, all of a sudden, a hand appears and started writing something on the wall. And of course, we say here is the handwriting on the wall. It started writing something on a wall, on the wall. And uh, of course, Belshazzar called his ast astrologers and magicians, and they couldn't figure it out. And then the queen said that she remembered that uh, there was a prophet 
and he, he interpreted dreams for Nebuchadnezzar. Let's bring this guy in and see if he can tell us what this means, this writing on the wall. So they called in the prophet Daniel. And here the prophet Daniel, it says here in Daniel 5, verse 25, it says, and this is the writing that was written on the wall. It's, it said, many, many tekel, you farsin. And then Daniel says, this is the interpretation of the thing. So here we see the interpretation, many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. So here we see the end of the Babylonian Empire, the end of the first beast, the lion. Verse 27, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. And then verse 28, Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So here we see that the Medes and the Persians were going to take over the dominance of the earth after the Babylonian empire and it's interesting we find that the chest the arms of silver and the chest of silver we see two groups the medes and the persians the medes lived in the uh, northern part of uh, persia uh, iran modern day iran and then the persians lived in the southern part of iran and here we see two arms the medes and the persians and the chest of silver so this was the this was the kingdom that was to take over from the Babylonian Empire, the chest and arms of silver. And here we see in Daniel 7, 5, I beheld another beast, a second. So a second kingdom was to come after the first kingdom, the lion, the Babylonian Empire. The bear is the Medo-Persian Empire. When you look at the size of Persia, of course, a bear is large in size, and so was the Persian Empire. It says here, uh, by share of population, by share of population, the largest empire, which accounted for approximately 49.4 million of the world's 102.4 million people in around 480 BC. An astonishing 44%. It says here by Clark's commentary that the, the Medo Persian Empire was slow, like a bear, but crushing crushing the armies. Uh, it says they simply overwhelmed their opponents with superior size and strength. The Medes and Persians are compared to a bear on account of their cruelty and thirst after blood, a bear being the most voracious and cruel animal. And the Persian monarchies were just that. They were cruel to their enemies. Now it says here that uh, it raised up itself on one side. Now what does that mean? And let me just read here from the uh, JF, JFB commentary. It says here, it says that there are two sides of a bear. And it says uh, the two sides of the bear are par parallel in meaning to the two breasts and two arms, two arms of the Colossus. It is implied, therefore, that the second kingdom consists of two parts and the raising up of one side implies that one part of the kingdom would come into greater prominence than the other. Such was the case in the Medo-Persian Empire, in which the Persian element surpassed the Median. And that is from, I'm sorry, Ellicott's commentary. So that's what it means by it raised itself on one side. One side of the empire dominated the other side. And then it says that it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And this is, and let me just read it to you in this commentary, the JFB commentary, the three ribs in his mouth, ribs of beasts, meaning kingdoms, it devours and grinded down. These probably represented Media, Lydia, and Babylon, who were under who were brought under the Persian, brought under Persian control. They are represented as three ribs because they strengthen the Medo-Persian Empire. Arise and devour much flesh, which is at the end of this prophecy. It says the ribs after becoming part of the kingdom, then urged the bear to devour even more, which it did and became a huge empire. So here we see that the second beast represents the Medo-Persians, the bear. It was a size, it was huge in size. It had brute force, treated their enemies like, uh, treated their enemies cruel, cruelly, just like a bear. It grinded them down just like a bear. The bear is a perfect representation of the Medo-Persian Empire.
Now, if you want to know more about these beasts, I urge you to uh, log on to our website, BritishIsrael.ca, and get our booklet, Who? What is the Beast of Revelation? And of course, we'll put the link in the description below, and you can uh, order it di directly from there. It's only $10, and of course, when we get the email of the order, just give us one business day, and we'll put the file in your email inbox within one business day. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel, and you, of course, can also join the BICOG on this channel. Just click the Join button there, and you can become a member of the BICOG. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends. I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.